Marty, what if we just use the deep dark web as the new internet? What if we discard the old internet and bring in the deep web and make the deep web the regular web and then we all just use the dark web as our daily internet browsing activities? Yeah! Is the FBI and the NSA and the CIA embedded in the deep web? Do they own it? Did they create it to catch you doing things that you shouldn't do? Well, privacy is a right and it's a right that needs to be protected. And if you don't protect it and I don't protect it, nobody's going to protect it. Certainly not your government. So, should we just use the deep web? Should we use the dark web and just discard the internet that is literally owned and controlled by about five big giant companies? Well, we're going to break that down today in Operation Deep Web. Hey, those are some good questions I appreciate you asking. I'm going to do my best to answer them all for you right now. If you haven't already, make sure you check out privacyxproject.com. we got lots of more in-depth stuff and we're starting our exclusive content over there because YouTube doesn't like me. They don't like me or my business or my content or the fact that I'm an American and I believe in the Constitution. I believe that people should be free. The government wants to own you. So... We're going to say no. I was just going to have to not go. But didn't we already go through that as people? Haven't we already done that? I know Native Americans, we did that. I know my brothers and sisters of every other race, we've already dealt with that. So why are we going back there? We're not. So let's break this down. Can we just use the deep web? Well, does the CIA, the NSA, the every other alphabet agency, ABC, XYZ, do they own the deep web, the dot onion, tour, etc.? Own is a strong word. Are they deeply embedded in it? Yeah, I mean, of course. You got people doing a lot of nefarious activity. I think the biggest thing with the dark web isn't that you shouldn't use it. I'm going to show you exactly how to use it here. I'm going to answer your questions and I'm going to give you the toolkit to use it. What, what I would recommend, but what I would say to you guys is I feel like reputation matters to a certain degree and it has this... I mean, literally, people call it the deep web or the dark web, right? It literally has this aura about it, like you're doing something illegal, even if you go to, like, the free wiki. Like, I'm just on the wiki. No FBI raids and breaks down your door and smashes it. No, dude, it's not that serious. So, the fact is, we do need a new internet. We do need a better internet. We need an internet that's for the people, by the people, and not for a few companies by a few companies, even though the people get hosed on a regular basis. So I can't tell you whether or not you should or should not use the dark web. I do put that out there. I don't care. I do. It's not illegal. At least not here in America. I can't speak for you. I, I can't speak for anybody, but in my interpretation and according to my lawyer and according to common sense, it's not illegal to go to a website. However, what you do, you are held accountable for what you do. Just like, it's not illegal to drive a car if you're a licensed driver, but if you drive it, woo, right off a bridge, that's probably illegal for several reasons. If you smash into somebody, if you do vehi vehicular manslaughter, right, so you get what I'm saying. Going to the dark web isn't, but if you're out there buying drugs or buying illegal things or computer hackers or putting hits on your neighbor's dog, that could be a problem. There, there's some issues with that. So it's not about where you are, but it's about what you do and you're held accountable to your actions regardless of where you are or what you do. That's on you. So how should you get on the dark web? Well, if you do, and that's a personal choice that only you could make, only you can prevent forest fires and only you can decide if you want to go on the deep web. So I've done videos on how I would set up virtual machines, but here's the toolkit I would use. First thing, you get on your computer. Now, Linux is the best option. You can use... Apple, and if you have a Windows computer, what I want you to do is log in, go in your closet, grab a baseball bat, and beat the hell out of it because you should not be using a Windows device for anything, and then go to the store and buy either wise an Apple or a, uh, ide ideally a Linux. Linux is the best. Apple has some value for business, and there, there's a debate about Apple, and I use Apple and Linux, but if you're using Windows, bro, <laughs> there, 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 there's not a lot of... <laughs> If you're, if you got a Dell, if dude, you're getting a Dell, I mean, I, I don't know what to tell you. So the reality is what I would recommend is the first thing is a VPN router. So it should be a VPN coming into your signal, right? Because you've got an ISP, an internet service provider, and they have all your information to a certain degree. Now, what I've done and what works really well is to set up your internet in a company name. Okay. And the crazy thing is these, these internet companies, they don't, I mean, I set up, uh, I, I did this. 
I was in Spokane, Washington, and I set up the internet, and I gave them a business name and my real name, and they wrote down my business name wrong and my real name wrong. And I never corrected them, but this is how much due diligence they have. They literally, ha I had the wrong first name, last name. I'm, I'm gonna let you on a little secret. I only use aliases, unless it's government, unless it's like a pay my taxes or something. But that's a personal choice. I can't advise you to do that or not. Some people say it's illegal. It's not, but uh, I'm not, but anyway. They had my name wrong anyway, and then they had my company name wrong. I never, this is, this is how, so, whether or not you give real information to your ISPs up to you, I never do, but I'm pretending you did. So then what you do is you have a VPN router. So your ISP has your information, goes into a VPN, which is an encrypted tunnel. Then I use a VPN on all my machines, including uh, even like you can see back here, we've got my kids a PS5 in my office. So when I'm working, they can come over here and play some, some I don't know, I'm not a gamer, but I bought them this PS5 so they could do, right? Everything goes through an encrypted because, and I don't let them log in to the, the general portal. I still do the, uh, the games, the discs you put, I'm, I'm, I'm the old dad, right? I put in the discs, right? So, uh, and, and everything, even the smart TV you see behind me is, is on a VPN, technically, because a big access point and a big hacking point is smart TVs and smart devices. A lot of people nowadays don't even hack your computer because computers are really tough to hack regardless of what Mr. Robot or other movies will have you believe. It's actually reasonably tough. You know what isn't tough? Smart TVs. You know what else isn't tough? Rebooting the system and getting into a standard modem because you've got a 12 year old modem from your local cable affiliate, right? You know what else isn't tough? All these smart devices or whether it's home cameras that are uh, just open. I mean, it's shocking how many home cameras you can just hop onto. Like it's, I, I, that's, that's a different video. So you've got your VPN router, you've got your VPN, you got your secure tunnel, you've got your VPN. I use private internet access. You can go to privacy access project and I give you a list of the ones I recommend. And by the reason I recommend them isn't affiliate. In fact, I'm not an affiliate for any of them. I don't get paid by any of them. It's the ones who don't log you, the ones who don't track you based on claims and the ones that have the best track record because there's a lot of them that'll turn over your data and there's some that claim they don't and we can't prove they ever did so we have to take them at their word to a certain degree so those are the ones i use then you got private internet access then you get on your machine hopefully a linux machine ideally is the best option there are other options then you get on your virtual machine you use virtualbox you use a virtual machine you set it up with Hoonix, which I've done a complete tutorial on this channel, so you can check out those videos. I highly recommend it. It's a good tutorial. I go step by step. Then, once you get on your virtual machine, you can log into your flavor of Linux, which there's a few different Linux flavors you can, you can log into. Everything's open source, so it's legit. Then, you can connect to Tor, okay? And when you use Tor, I talked about this in yesterday's video about the government infiltrating Tor, and I recommend you watch that video because I break down some really valid, good points on both sides. Then you use Tor, you use it the stock version of Tor, not all the add-ons and plugins and blah. You want to be a ghost on Tor. Best thing you can do is leave it alone. Don't change screen resolutions. Don't change everything. Then you go uh, to wherever you want to go on the on, on the dark web now i read the reason i mentioned the free wiki is i do recommend the free wiki when you're first getting going reason being a lot of people get really nervous and really scared when they go to dot onion sites because they literally feel like they're doing something wrong because it's been branded that way you're just on the internet i mean i don't want to go down this road but there is a lot of illegal underage photos weapons Things that are on the regular, regular internet. Like the amount of garbage that is on the regular internet, but you're on that every day. You're going to your favorite social site. You're going to your favorite website, probably privacyxproject.com. You're going to, right? You're going to all your favorite places. Let's be real. The regular, regular internet is loaded with illegal, nefarious garbage, but yet you're on it every day. But the dark web has a little bit of both but they're just more open about it. They're just more honest about it. And so you're like, oh, I don't know if I should be on this dot onion. Now, again, this is a, a choice you have to make for yourself. I'm not recommending you do, but I'm, I, what I'm saying is what I would do to get on there. Now, some people say, well, Cody, if it's fine and legal, why do, why do you go through all these steps to go on the dark web? Oh, no, no, my guy. 
I don't go through all these steps to go on the dark web. I go through all these steps to go on the internet, period, because it's not all these steps, it's standard. And you should take your privacy and security. Now, I own, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a business owner, and I've got things to protect, assets to protect, I've got children, I've got, you know, different things. So I take my privacy, that's my, not only do I help clients and, and teach people how to do this and teach people how to make assets disappear, make them disappear, live ghost lives, ghost businesses, but also I practice what I preach and I've done that in my own life. So I live this way in general. Now all my stuff is built like this. So it's built to, to be privately. I've got the VPN router, I've got the VPNs, I've got the virtual machines. I've got, I, I actually go much deeper than I'm talking about right now. I've taken it to a whole nother level, but that's for more of an advanced tutorial, which I've been setting up to shoot soon. I'll be setting an advanced tutorial soon. But this is something that you guys can accomplish today, right now. You can go on the internet today, right now, with what I'm saying, most of which is free. Now, the only component I would, would, would toggle in and out is if you don't have a VPN router, you're going to be okay. That's just an extra layer of security, and I highly recommend VPN routers. But have a VPN, and then go through a virtual machine, go through Linux, go through uh, Tor, and you know, get on to a dot onion site, only use browsers like DuckDuckGo or similar that care about privacy and security. Obviously if you're using things like Google or Yahoo, bro, I mean, that's okay. Clearly most people don't care about privacy. If they did, Google wouldn't have over 90% market share. My default browser is certainly not Google. My, my default browser is not Chrome, it's not Safari. My default search engine is not Google. It's not any of these other goofy, you know what I mean? So you, you've got to make a more of a lifestyle. Once you set up the pieces, it's easy. And I get questions every day like, Cody, this just sounds like a lot of work. No, it's a small amount of work like once. Really, you know what I mean? And then whenever I log on, that's just standard, right? So it, it takes you an hour to set up once and then it's no different than anything else when software updates you update it no different than when your computer updates or your phone updates every five minutes or whatever other update you have it's no different right so you're, you're you're investing like an hour and most of what i'm talking about is open source software with the exception of a vpn that costs like a few dollars a year like what are we talking about here and it gives you an added layer of an encrypted tunnel and a lot of people think vpns are like some super secret private thing they're not they're separating your ISP. Basically, for most of you, if you don't use a uh, VPN, the ISP is looking over your shoulder, okay? The, everything you do, they're looking over your shoulder. If you use a VPN, you're able to go through an encrypted tunnel and allow a little bit more privacy. Now, people say, well, you go in, you go out. Exactly, you go in, you go out. So that's why I and other privacy experts and privacy advocates and privacy channels and, and people who are interested in, in privacy and security and, and you know, privacy technology and, and digital technology and how to use it properly, talk about the VPN is not the end all be all. I've talked about this in countless videos. Does it add an encrypted tunnel? Yes. Is there an entry point and an exit point? Yes. So is it not perfectly secure? Of course. That's why you have the layers and the pieces that come together like a puzzle. Because there's no one thing. I wish there was something I could buy. I would spend any price if I could just buy it and you have a cloak of anonymity on the internet. Wouldn't you buy that? Everyone would, but it's not true. And, and, and I, unfortunately, a lot of VPN companies, which is why I've turned down working with a handful of VPN companies, I'm trying to find a good one to work with. But the reason I've turned most of them down is because they're trying to sell a cloak of, of privacy and security, which is a lie. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna peddle that garbage. So VPNs have value, but it's not the end all be all. And I don't recommend all of you run out and buy as many VPNs as you can because that doesn't change everything. You've got to compartmentalize, like we talk about. Now, will the dark web be able to take over the current web? No, we we need a new internet. We really need an internet for the people by the people. Can that happen? Yeah, but you would. It's tough. I mean, from the first story in the Bible, he took a bite out of the damn apple, right? And you see that with everyone. Everyone's a philanthropist. Everyone's a good person until they become X, Y, Z, and then it's all about them. It's all about greed. And it's, it seems to be human nature. So everyone's awesome until they get to the point. It's like, well, I could help people, but I could also make an apple three, four billy for myself, right? I could help someone, but also I could help myself, right? So it's, it comes down to human nature. So will we ever have a, a for the people, by the people internet? Probably not. I mean, 
whenever the people get together, I mean, you saw that BS that happened in my home state of Washington state, Seattle, that Chaz, Chad, whatever the hell that was supposed to be. <laughs> it was supposed to be an autonomous zone. And within two days, those idiots were appointing leaders and basically dictators and police enforcement. And they were taxing the people. They were forcing people to pitch in. Within two days, they literally created the BS that they were trying to get away from. But the difference is, instead of being part of the system, they appointed themselves to the kings and queens, the power people. Within two days! So this utopia crap is ridiculous. And the same people who wanted to get away from the system appointed themselves to kings and queens within two days. And then that thing fell apart. That's the same reason all empires fall apart. The mighty Mongolian Empire, the mighty Roman Empire, etc., 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 because of the power dynamic. So, this creates a serious problem. What is the answer? Well, I think having an open source and decentralized internet. Now, you see what Odyssey has done with videos, and I post my videos on YouTube and on Odyssey, and if you haven't already, check me out on Odyssey, go subscribe over there. I'm actually gonna start posting some exclusive content to just Odyssey, because there are some videos I make that are in-depth tutorials that YouTube just bans. I've had three videos taken down that are detailed privacy tutorials on how to do stuff. So I am gonna start posting exclusive content to just Odyssey, because I have no choice, because YouTube keeps messing with what I do because they don't like what I do. So if you haven't already, go, go subscribe on Odyssey. The link's down below, you can check it out and subscribe. Of course, it's, you know, you, anybody, it's like YouTube only, uh, dare I say, better. It's more decent, it just doesn't have the audience, it doesn't have the reach, but either does any YouTuber. We're all suppressed all the freaking time, it doesn't matter. You, it doesn't matter, I mean, I get people every day like Cody, I subscribe, and then I thought you weren't putting out videos, and then I check your channel, and you put out 20 videos, I get no notifications, I turn notifications on, no notifications. Also, I've got more messages than I can count of people who be just randomly unsubscribed. And I know what happens, because I get unsubscribed from my favorite channels all the time. And I've had this YouTube channel for like 10, um, I have a separate YouTube channel where I watch YouTube, because YouTube, if I watch it from my channel, then YouTube puts it, like, they're always profiling you and putting you in little boxes. So anyway, long story short, they unsubscribe me from my favorite channels too. So it's all BS. So we need a decentralized, you look at like the blockchain, you look at how things have come together, you look at decentralization, you look at how the dark web and deep web work, you look at how these things work, what do we need? Should we set up something that's more of a, more decentralized? Yeah. Will it happen? I hope so. How's it gonna happen? Very tough, it's gonna be very tough. It's gonna be very difficult for this to happen. But here's the hoping. Appreciate you checking this out. Make sure you go and subscribe if you haven't already. Give this video a thumbs up. Take action in your life, guys. Your privacy really is important. I know I come on here and I'm loud and I'm excited and stuff. And I am passionate about this. This is why I do this. Let's be honest, I, I could do a much bigger niche where I could grow a lot bigger. But the fact is I care about privacy security and I love privacy X. I love building this company. I love helping people like you do these things. And that's why I am building privacy X. Cause to me, it's a passion project. I mean, I look at my views and it's sickening how much I'm suppressed, how much a video starts getting traction and then it just stops.